It is currently argued that 3,000 of the world's 6,000 or so languages would be lost by the end of the 21st century through the erosion of oral traditions and language. It can be further argued that digital technology contributes to this erosion. But can it also offer the opportunity to record a culture's heritage in oral, visual and literary forms? Uh, Nepal, according to the last census, uh, has about 92 different language groups, ethnic groups. And out of these 92, only four or five would have a written tradition. So most of these other uh, languages would be a language with an oral tradition. Uh, Madan Puskar Pustakale uh, was established about 60 years ago. So the initial mandate was to sort of promote as well as preserve the Nepali language. And uh, it has now sort of become the official uh, legal deposit library in the country. The reason uh, MPP uh, moved into technology was about 10 years ago, and we wanted to automate our catalog records. And then we found out that the problem was the whatever software that was used did not uh, have support for the script that the Nepali language uses, the Devanagari script. And we tried different options, I mean, private vendors, universities, and nothing it could not work. And so we thought, I mean, we'll try it ourselves. Uh, to give an example, I mean, we had to start from scratch, like uh, spell checkers um, for English is taken for granted, you know, grammar checkers taken for granted. Uh, but none of that existed. And so to develop a spell checker, we had to collate uh, the vocabulary of Nepali words, you know, I mean, that in itself is a lot of work. I, we digitize every periodical that we get every day. That's about 200 titles. The proper scanner to do it, uh, we would not be able to afford and maintain and all that. We rely heavily on open source uh, software uh, to do a lot of our stuff for cataloging, for scanning, you know. So we use an open source uh, repository uh, called DSpace to upload everything online. Because we use a different script, other than English, we have to customize most of the software ourselves. Devnagari is the script that the Nepali language uses, and the script is also used by Hindi language. And Hindi being the sort of uh, national language in India, uh, there was a lot of work already done, being done on Hindi, you know. So when Unicode came along, I mean, they just basically adopted uh, ISKI, the Indian standard for uh, Devanagari. Unicode uh, is a fairly technical, I mean, consortium. It only works with scripts. It doesn't care about languages. So in order to get registered in, a, in the Unicode consortium, you would need a script, and the script has to be totally unique uh, uh, from whatever there exists in the Unicode currently. And so it's very difficult, even for existing Nepali languages. The main problem is we are stuck with the keyboard, the hardware, you know, I mean, we can only do modification on the software side, but I mean, it would be difficult to sort of create a new keyboard just for Nepal. Even today, uh, we don't have uh, that much of content in Nepali language. So, you know, there is a situation whereby you need to know, uh, you know, your English to have, uh, you know, to, to really, you know, reap benefit out of these technologies. Most people want their children to study uh, study in English because English opens a lot of doors. Uh, once you know English and you're good at English, then you get better jobs, you have better opportunities for further education. You know, use of uh, language uh, in uh, the digital technologies, I think it's, uh, uh, you know, one of the uh, very controversial, uh, you know, uh, area. Most of the population in Nepal, uh, because they only have a language with an oral tradition, and for them, I think the technology uh, that would enable them would be speech-based uh, interface uh, available on the computer. The much more advanced uh, technology, I mean, like speech and all that, you would actually have to do a lot more work than... <laughs>